Alright, back uh, to do another fly today. Today we're going to be doing a uh, classic, the uh, Crazy Charlie. Great uh, bonefish fly for pretty much anywhere there's bonefish. We're just going to be doing a slight variation. We're going to be putting some of this uh, shell pink uh, foxtail on it instead of uh, calf tail. So, I think the fox is nice because it uh, helps the fly sink a little faster, adds a little bit more movement. Oh, but overall it's still going to look basically the same as just a regular Charlie. So we're going to start out, we got a uh, A-Rex SA220 here in the vise. Uh, we just started tying with these hooks. Uh, I carry them on the site now. Great hook, I'm loving them so far. So I recommend you guys give those a try. Start out with some uh, Danville Shell Pink uh, 140 denier. We're going to go eight wraps. eight wraps behind the uh, eye of the hook here. Like you guys have seen in my other videos, we just do that. So when we're tying in bulk, all of our flies come out looking pretty much the exact same. So I'm gonna uh, cut off a piece of bead chain here. This uh, happens to be size large bead chain. We're gonna go ahead and just right where we ended our thread, just figure eight these onto the uh, hook shank. Uh, just get your nice figure eight wraps, a couple wraps under them. You know, just get them nice and secured on there. And this fly pretty much traditionally is tied with uh, B chain. Um, a lot of times when you go into shops and stuff, it's hard to find this fly if you need it heavier. So you pretty much got to get it custom tied if you want heavier. So. Now we'll take the fly and we'll just get some thread on the uh, hook shank here to keep our next material from slipping. So our next material is going to be uh, vinyl rib. Uh, D-rib, any, any type of just vinyl rib will work. It uh, basically has two rounded sides and a flat side. This happens to be the clear color. So since we're tying this in a, uh, in a shrimp pink today, the, the clear actually lets the uh, pink of our flashaboo shine through really nicely as opposed to getting this material in pink. So we're going to tie it right back until about right before the bend of our hook here. And get my spool out of the way. And I'm going to take some, uh, this is Saltwater Flashaboo. Uh, you guys have seen me use this on a bunch of our patterns. Love this stuff, super cheap, you know, and uh, really helps when you're trying to make a smooth body. So we're just going to cut off one strand and we're going to do just like we did with the D-rib. Start at the front. Just tie it right back. Just trying to make as smooth of a body as we can here. And we'll bring our thread back forward. Again, just smoothing out that body. You don't want to build up a taper or build up a whole lot of thread here uh, with this material. So we're going to take that uh, flashaboo. We're just going to wrap the hook shank in flashaboo. So this is a uh, this is pink saltwater flashaboo. So it lets that pink color still show through. It's it's really uh, translucent, which is nice. So we'll go ahead and figure it around the eyes here a couple times, and then we'll tie that off on the front of the fly and cut our excess out. Next thing we're going to do is take our D-rib and wrap it around the hook shank, same as we just did with the flashaboo. Now I like to keep it on the uh, on the spool here. I think it helps me keep the uh, D-rib much tighter when I'm wrapping it. So all I'm going to keep doing, I'm just going to go and do it slowly. If you've got a rotary vise, which this one is, you could just use the rotary feature, but not everybody has it. So we'll just go slow and show everybody and just. You want to make that body nice and tight. Just one wrap right after another. They're going to be touching each other. And you'll see that uh, see that pink shows up through this uh, clear rib pretty nicely here. So we'll go all the way right back up behind the eye here. And that should be good. So we'll bring our thread right over the eyes or our rib right over the eyes, sorry. 
And we're just going to tie that right in on the front here. You don't need to uh, figure eight the rib around the eyes. Uh, really all you're going to do there is just create too much bulk around the eyes. So just go ahead and bring it just right over and tie it off. And trim that rib out. Make sure that rib's secure. So next thing I like to do, uh, this is a fly, especially when you fish on the flats. It has attracts a lot of snappers and stuff. So I like to take a little bit of uh, loom flow and just coat my body with it. And because of the way you tie this in, that loom flow will really get down into the body and, uh, and penetrate it. Make this just a really nice durable fly for you. So you don't have to worry. I mean, if you're just hooking bonefish on it, it's going to last you tons and tons of bonefish. If you're in a place that has a lot of snappers and other little fish that like to hit your fly, then uh, this will help it stand up to a lot more of that uh, abuse. Go ahead and hit this with our uh, UV light. Perfect. All right. So we'll invert our hook. You can see we got our little body going there. And we're gonna go right back and use our uh, our foxtail. We uh, we sell this foxtail on the site now. I mean, you guys can see that's a pretty damn big chunk of foxtail, and unlikely that you're gonna find somewhere that's gonna beat the price on that. Um, I think we got 10 or 12 different colors, and it comes in. Like I said, if you want some foxtail, it's hard stuff to beat. And all we're going to do is we're just going to get a little pinch of foxtail here. Cut it right off our hide. And we're going to start by just picking out a bunch of the long hairs. You're going to end up picking this out pretty good. You want the, uh, the tips of this all to be about the same size. And almost be uniform just like you would with the, uh, the original calf tail on this. So, go ahead and pick out some of the, uh, the under fur as well. Get a whole bunch of under fur out of there. And this is probably the process on this fly that takes the longest. Is just picking through the uh, fox and just getting it, getting it to the right size and, and proportions, getting everything lined up on it. I mean, you don't have to be this precise with it, but. I like my fly to look really neat, so. And if you're a little bit OCD, this helps too. <laughs> Just make, make your fly look as perfect as possible. So that looks pretty good. And really, you want to tie this wing on the fly pretty short. So you don't want it extending way past the hook. Really, you want it just so that wing is going to go just slightly past the hook. That looked about right. Cut a little off there. Just grab it with one hand. Make a loose wrap. And let's go ahead and tie that right down. You can see it extends just a little bit past the hook barb, or not hook barb, but past the hook. And I'm starting to get good to go there. Then we're going to reach for our uh, final material. This is just a little bit of uh, crystal flash. I believe this is in pearl. You don't need much here. About three strands of crystal flash will do great for this fly. And all we're going to do is just get a little bit of crystal flash on each side of this fox. So we'll get a little bit that goes past the end of the fox on one side. Tie it in. Oop. And we broke our thread. I must have hit that uh, B chain eye there. It's all right. Great thing about fly tying is you can always reattach your thread. So like I said, we tied it on one side and then we'll just bring it right back over. And right back over if we can get this little piece here. And we'll tie it going right down the other side. And we'll just kind of lift up on all of our uh, 
crystal flash and we'll tie it just just ever so slightly longer than the uh, fox so. you just come in here and clean up your head a little bit get your head just looking a little neater and you can take your whip finish tool go ahead and whip finish your fly I like to throw always a bunch of whip finishes in there. The more durable the fly, the better. Cut that out. And then just in case we got a little bit of fox straggling at the front, I just hit the front with the lighter. Again, that's just going to make a nice even tie-in point for you. Make just a just a better looking fly. And then last but not least, we're just going to hit those thread wraps with some more Loon Flow. Just brush those right on the thread wraps and get a little bit over the eyes. Make sure you just get nice coverage on your thread. Let it sit for just a second. That thread will soak up some of the uh, loom flow. And we're just going to hit it with our light. And that's it. That's the uh, Crazy Charlie. So great, uh, great fly for bonefish just about anywhere. I know they especially like this fly in the Bahamas. Um, we're going to start carrying this fly on the uh, site. You'll be able to get it in bead chain, uh, brass, or uh, lead that fits your needs pretty much anywhere. And then, uh, like I said, we now have uh, the fox hair, uh, fox hair and fox tail. On the site, we got a bunch of other materials. If you're looking for stuff like coyote, and we're gonna have uh, uh, rabbit strips that are gonna be sourced, a bunch of different uh, natural materials for you guys. So uh, definitely go check out the site and check out some of the uh, materials. I think you guys will end up liking the uh, prices compared to some of the uh, big retailers. And like I said, the uh, the quality of the stuff. I mean, great long fibers. You get tons of material. For just an absolutely fantastic price so go check it out hope you guys like the fly and uh thanks for watching